How many of you actually did your homework? Oh. Huh? How many actually did your whole homework? Ah. Thank you. Obviously, if you don't do the whole homework, you're not, not going to have the whole benefit. So that's something for you to bear in mind. And no excuses. All right? You don't have to give excuses here. It doesn't matter. I've just asked how many did the whole homework. And the reason why I asked how many did your whole homework, because they are the only ones that are going to be able to measure whether they improved during the month or not. Do you see what I'm saying? So the beauty of doing the whole homework is you actually see your own improvement demonstrated to you. And that's a very powerful thing. One of the reasons why that's very powerful is because you can build on the truth of that. You see, a lot of times what happens on the Divine Love Path is we don't build on the truths we've already learned. What we do, what, when we're laying truth, we're laying foundation for your future. So the way to lay a foundation is to make sure the foundation is nice and secure and nice and firm. And then when you're building on it, nothing collapses. Does that make sense? But if you don't lay a very firm and secure foundation, when you build on it, some things will happen, like some spirits will come along and upset your equilibrium. Some spirits might, you know, be quite angry and upset with you, and they get they trigger you and straight into that happening. So you may find that if you don't build on a nice firm foundation, you'll often on the divine love path get times when you feel like really, really disillusioned and really doubtful and all that. And all of that is because the foundation isn't firm enough yet. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. And one of the ways to build on this nice firm foundation is to actually be able to measure your progress. This is why having a notebook is really handy. Because you can go back to the notes that you made a year ago, wow, yeah, I've done that, I've worked through that now, I don't feel that anymore. And you can actually see your own progression. Um, down the track, what's going to be happening um, is that Fraser has actually offered to actually videotape my life which is going to be very confronting for me, emotionally. And so that in the end, we can demonstrate to other people the process of becoming at one with God in a documentary form. So that's one of the things that we've got sort of on the side happening as well that you may not have heard about before. Is that happening now? No, no, because it freak, the whole idea freaks me out at this point. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, um, but, but it'll probably start next month or something. So, oh, I've told him, yes, I'm going to do it. It's just a matter of building up enough courage to do it. So, yeah. so it's going to be like, sort of like fly on the wall stuff, you see. So, the, yeah, not like Big Brother. There's going to be a man behind the camera, but yeah. Um, so the whole idea really freaks me out. So I'm having to work through quite a lot of emotions about it before, before it goes in. Now, um, Another question I'd like to ask is, how many of you watched some of the movies that were in that list at the bottom? Yeah? Okay, how did you find them? Yeah, quite powerful, aren't they? Yeah, yeah that's good. Now, what we said uh, we would do in the start of every one of the sessions from now on is have a debriefing session. And the way we'll handle the debriefing session will be a little bit different in every case. So, uh, to try and make it a bit more interesting and mix it up a little bit for you and make a bit more involved rather than listening to me for another boring three hours, right? So what we want to do is with each debriefing session, the first debriefing session, remember, was about the law of attraction. And, and regard, it's regarding the hierarchy of truth. So the point, the point of the session was that if we want to uh, receive um, truth, the different types of truth that we receive will be totally dependent upon how often we think of these truths and how often we seek them in our lives. Now in the Bible it's mentioned often, over and over again that only the people who seek are the ones who find. Right? And seeking comes from the heart. So it's only those people who are seeking from the heart actually find the truth. Now we've got to be really sincere with ourselves about that. So. With regard to mediumship and healing, if you don't do the homework, what you're going to find is that 
your results are going to mirror the desire you experienced in your experience for the last month. So if you had a really, really high desire, you'll find that the results will mirror that desire, generally. And if, but if your desire is a bit more lukewarm, then of course your results are going to mirror that desire. And that applies right across the board with everything on the Divine Love Path. If your desire isn't strong enough to seek truth, what will happen is that you will find your progression slowed down by the lack of desire. And that's a beautiful thing God has done for you because it's a way of you even measuring your own desire. And in the end, part of this process is about having such a large desire that you can exercise free will in, this, in harmony with love with this really powerful desire. And it's the desire that's going to actually accomplish so many things in your life from now, from now on. More, more than you've ever accomplished in your life before. So, the point is, the more you feel and think about will affect what your mediumship or your healing is going to be like. That's the main point for this hierarchy of truth. So if I think about mundane matters and I think about, you know, looking after my life during the week and going to work and busy with paying the bills and all those kind of things, and, I, and that takes most of my time, then what's going to happen? That is going to be reflected in the, th the things I can channel about or the things I can heal with. But if my feelings are more about love and looking, looking about, searching for truth about love and thinking about love more and so forth, then, of course, my desire is going to be much stronger on that particular side of things, and therefore I'll be able to receive more information about those particular truths. Uh, who hasn't had a handout? Because there's some printed now. Okay. sit on that when I sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the not the wet. That's all right. <laughs> all right. Now, what I'd like to do with this session with the Law of Attraction is to ask you how many of you noticed your Law of Attraction showing you something about which, like I mentioned there, show, showing you your Law of Attraction during the month. Like, how many of you were noticing your Law of Attraction during the month? All right, very good. So that's really good. Everyone's sort of focused about seeing what's attracted to them. How many of you got angry and upset with what was attracted to you during the month? Irritated. Irritated. Yeah, even mildly frustrated. All right, or annoyed. And even a bit had the feeling of like, gee, I wish I didn't have that law of attraction. <laughs> okay. So what that means is when we're in that state, we are actually now denying the emotional experience. Now, how many of you actually went then down into the emotional experience of that law of attraction? How many of you did that? Excellent. So quite a lot of you have gone right down. Now, do you think you went down into it where it was released? So who felt you actually released it right to the end? So hardly any feel that. Okay. So can you see that we must still have resistance to actually feeling everything that our Law of Attraction is bringing us? The problem with that is our Law of Attraction is going to bring us that same thing again because we didn't experience it fully the first time. I'm not going to answer questions, sorry, at this point. Now, what I would like to do now, though, is ask some of you who did do the homework in full. So you have to have done the homework in full where you actually channeled something about the law of attraction the first time, then you did the homework in full, and then you channeled something about the law of attraction the second time, and the two messages were quite different. Or you felt there was quite different information the second time. How many of you felt that? So Millie, you did? No? You did? Can we come up?
You haven't looked at the original since. <laughs> I've been going. <laughs> yeah, say your name to everyone. Good afternoon, my name's Chris. Is this turned on? Doesn't sound like it. Um, should be. Yeah. Oh, here's it. Just let me keep speaking. I'll just Hello. See. Testing, one, two, three. Oh, it's coming on. No, it's gone again. There it is. There yeah, we're with it. Yeah. Okay, my name's Chris. I'm from Brisbane. Hi, Chris. Former Sunshine Coast. So, Chris, uh, when you first did the first channeling, what did you get there generally? Um, I think it was my head, my okay. head, my head talking. Let's read the whole thing, okay, and see what the head talking said. The uh, talking head said. <laughs> <laughs> talking heads, yeah. Um, can I preface this by saying that I've been working on uh, new age type stuff for 25 years. I've learned to uh, have a calm exterior. I think Mary said it the other day. Perfectly serene. Um, I've been that for many, many years, and so. Uh, I'm very calm, my life's very good. The only thing I get irritated about little things occasionally, <laughs> often. <laughs> so you have mild annoyances and frustrations. Like 30 times a day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's a, that's a normal thing, actually, to happen in other circumstances. Okay, um, so I asked my, I've never spoken to a spirit guide before, in my, to my knowledge. Um, so this is, I asked my spirit guide what was the story on law of attraction and he said, as you know, the attraction is soul to soul. First from God to you, who is your soul, then from your soul to all the other souls and situations which occur to show you what is the true state of your soul. Your emotions as held in your soul, be they true or false, are the magnets which create your life around you. Um, many of these emotions are wonderful and true, but also you carry many damaged emotions which are at variance with God's truth. It is these emotions and the beliefs attached to them which damage your soul and prevent the full inflow of God's truth and hence her love. Your suppression of these emotions um, has caused you to become oblivious or unaware of the, the uh, of their existence as you success successively access these emotions you will attract more and more of god's love which will heal you and attract newer circumstances into your life how does that sound awesome. no no it's very good that's awesome very good i don't know it's very accurate too. um to me i can't tell when i when it's my head or my my spirit i really I really have no... How many of you feel that same thing? That you can't really tell the difference here a lot, so that's a, that's a common thing. Okay, yeah, you want to hear today, is the, the latest one? The latest one, yeah. The that was done... Oh, that can was... you tell us the emotions that... Well, well you, you prayed each day, did you? As a... I, yeah, I, I, I get up an hour, do an hour every morning. So, um, tell us a bit about what you do each day to keep your mind on the, on the divine life. Um, a, lot, a lot of my stuff is um, um, self-judgment. Um, I... I my irritations are with other people and when I judge them to be doing something stupid or wrong or whatever. But I also do it with myself. And because I haven't yet accessed any of my emotions in the way that I think I should be doing, I'm, I've got a lot of self-judgment there. Yeah. Um, so you're feeling frustrated with your own emotions? Frustrated with that. Um, so a lot of my... I, I've written down... I've, written to, I've got another journal over there too. And I've written to God and told him what a stupid bloody system it is. And, yeah. And uh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Effing thing. Yeah. How am I supposed to know what the freaking will do? Um, How many of you feel that? <laughs> one, one, of, one of my things in there says AJ says feel the emotion. I says How do you freaking will feel? I can't feel it because I haven't been in touch with them for 20 years. I don't know where, where they are even or what they are. So, so then I've been sitting down and I just say, okay, Spirit Guide, you've got to tell me. I, I mean, I have no idea. And I talk to God and I talk to the Spirit Guide and whatever the Spirit Guide is. I haven't asked his name yet. I call him SG, uh, Spirit Guide. <laughs> I, I said, well, when we get on better terms, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you your name. <laughs> I mean, this is my head. I'm not going to ask him because I'm sure that I'm just, you know, it'll just say Barbara or Kevin or something. How, how will I know if that's his name? Or her. Or her. I mean, 
Protham. Does Protham mean the name anything to you? No. Okay. <laughs> it, it was a name I got years ago when I when I was trying to. I was on the church based path. But anyway, um, so yeah, I've been feeling that I've been doing what I call the steps. Um, I'm trying. You know, I'm, I'm I'm absolutely committed with my intelligence to the divine love path. In fact, I've become addicted to AJ. <laughs> 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 Not that way. <laughs> but I, I can't stop watching his DVDs and I've got to turn the DVDs off and sit down and actually try and access emotions because they're not coming. I'm, I, mean, I, 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 can, I was sharing this with, um, with Paula outside. Um, the one thing that's happened in, in the last month, uh, we came to the last mediumship, I came to the last mediumship um, session, but I've been watching the DVDs for six weeks. Um, my wife and I are now much, much gentler and helpful to one another, uh, very loving. I mean, we've got a great relationship anyway, because we've done all the New Age stuff. Um, so, we've got a great relationship, but it's much more gentle. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing I've noticed that I was sharing with Paula is that I notice my emotions during the day, uh, my, my, my irritations, and I try to say what's behind that, mm -hmm. and I can never get, but I'm noticing them. Before I never noticed them, I yeah. just got angry and swore at people. Yeah. Uh, well, not angry, I don't get angry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but, but now I'm taking, how do I feel at that? How do I feel about that? How do I feel about that? So, yeah. so, so you are at least having a consciousness now of what emotions are coming up, even though you can't get to the underlying emotion. So you, exactly. you've got a consciousness of the capping. And I keep telling myself that's progress. Yeah, so, certainly. Um, because I have this, I, I probably have a strong need to be accepted and loved. Um, so my heads keep telling me what, what I've got to do to make people like me more. Um, and I do public speaking, so, you know, uh, it's one of the things out there. I like to be applauded and I like to all of those things. Um, so when I judge myself as being the worst in the group because I'm not getting any of these emotion things, um, I keep telling myself well, at least I'm starting to notice. Yeah, so exactly. I'm, I'm hoping that yeah. me and God and the, and the spirit guy will get together one day. <laughs> so many, many of you would be having the same feelings of frustrations at a time where where you're feeling like you're watching the DVDs, you feel really enthused, you feel really encouraged, and then you get off to do it yourself, and you feel like, uh, uh, just not getting it, just not getting it. The key is to remember that you're actually dealing with a lot of your blockages. So allow yourself to see your blockages and coming up. So what was the second message? I'm interested. Okay, um, this is, I said, hi, Spirit of God and God, let's go. The law of attraction is almost, almost the most fundamental, one of the, oh, Almost the most fundamental law of God. It determines what happens when and to whom. Mm -hmm. It is the guide and the judge of all actions by me and by men and spirits. God does not need to concern herself with justice, correction, punishment, or other like principles which men choose to see as necessary. Mm -hmm. The law of attraction has brought you and I together. Hey, that's interesting. I didn't remember I'd written that. <laughs> and brought you to, the, to this stage in your progression. You see this stage as a major factor for you, and it is. But so too were all the other stages you have passed through. I haven't read this since the other day, so I don't know. You are concerned at what you see as your lack of progress. But from our perspective, all is well. There is no need for concern. You will reach new heights in due time none of us here judge you or anything you do we simply continue to this is emotional we can we, 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 uh, yeah i don't mind that um we simply continue to pour our love out to you and to rejoice in the exactness of god's plan we are here to help you at all times in any way we can Mm. Wow. Now, that one was more of an emotional message, wasn't it? Which is actually, now that you're reading it, triggering some emotions, which is good. Can you see, too, there's a number of comments that were made about God in that message that were actually very true. You see, God doesn't need to concern herself with justice, 
doesn't need to concern herself with correction or punishment because all of her laws are already set up to do that. They're all set up to go. Like The law of attraction is one of those major laws. And like you've correctly channeled, it is one of those most fundamental laws of God that causes God to not have to worry about these things because her laws all worry about it for her, if you like. I, do you actually think I'm channeling then? Yeah. Because... To me, it just sounds like thoughts that I know that AJ would like it if I write. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Seriously, I'm seriously trying to just let my pen flow, mm -hmm. and that's why I haven't read it again. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds to me like my head talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I. So when most of you start this process, it's going to sound like it's just your head talking. <coughs> it really is. And the key is as you develop more and more, you'll feel the difference between something that's coming from inside of you and something that's coming from outside of you. And initially, it's going to be a combination of both. Now, because you have looked at the law of attraction and stuff, and you know, you've been quite versed in it for a lot of your life now, and it, there is already a quite a sound basis. And the reason why I chose that subject as one of the first uh, subjects to do is because for many of you, Many of you already have quite a sound understanding of the law of attraction. So, um, although I doubt whether you have the understanding that about God there. That, no. 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 Well, so where did that come from? And you didn't have the understanding of this one either, did you? Um, there, the, the law of attraction has brought you and I together. That was, and that was an interesting thing because it was actually sounded. It seemed like there was someone else. Yeah, just for a moment, it yeah. felt like. We're two separate entities. Yeah, yeah. that's so, it. Yeah. Um, you and I together, and yeah. brought you to this stage in your progression. Yeah. So, um, so the key now is the key now is from from my perspective, you did a really good job trying to please me. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's a motive, <laughs> but but the truth is that everything you have channeled there is very truthful. Right. Now, now, whether it's come from your own soul or whether it's come from your guide's soul, you can see that there are bits and pieces there that you would never have thought of. For instance, this bit here about God does not need to concern herself with justice, correction and punishment or other like principles because the law of attraction handles all that for her. That is a, that is a major principle, right? But you wouldn't have probably thought of that before. No, I guess, yeah. And, and my, my previous thing where I wrote and wrote a page and a half condemning God for the stupidity of the system. Exactly. So, so you're not too hot on the system, but it's a perfect system. But that's obviously an emotion. And, yeah. and that's what I am I guess I'm noticing. I can notice that I've got a law of, a, 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 an emotion of need. I've got, a, a, I've got some anger with God. But I'm not feeling them as, yeah. as, as feelings. Yeah. As but like your guys have also correctly said there, don't worry, all is well. You will actually work through these blockages and eventually you'll start getting down to those emotions. So the key is that just to trust that process and trust what you're doing now and work your way through it that way. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to be right. Everything that you've previously done has, has brought you to this phase of learning this truth. And now as you're learning this truth, it's going to help you through to the next phases where you'll be able to actually teach those truths. Yeah. 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 I'll tell everyone, I do public speaking, but I'm trembling now. You know, so I don't know if that's an emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Thanks. 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 Uh, would anyone else like to uh, just express it? Denise, you want to pop up? <laughs> Thank you very much. My law of attraction is I'll see it as an ice cream in my ear. Ah, not an ice cream. I'm not off here because I believe that this is right or even channel. I'm here because I have a desire to learn and to go back to basics. Um, to Can know you explain to everyone what your background is a little? Oh, okay. About 2002, I went to a spiritual um, workshop at Coolum. And I went to bed one night, and as I lay down, I got minister. I thought, what? And it really felt right, and I thought, you have to be kidding. You have to be kidding. I can't stand up in front of people. I can't talk. I know nothing about the Bible. I don't even know if Jesus is real. I'm not even sure if God's real. I just sort of talk to God, because if he is there, you know, then I won't get punished because I'm talking to him and, and whatever. So I just ignored it, and, and I actually had a vision of a church change to me at the same time, and 
the next day I said to the teacher what I got, and he said, yeah, I saw that for you yesterday, but you wouldn't have believed me if I'd told you. So I just thought, yeah, one day, okay, not believing that I'd actually got the message, and six months later, I had a medium um, do a reading for me, and the first thing she said is, they want to know what the hold-up is with starting the church. <laughs> and I, and I said, oh, well, the church is tied up in probate and all that sort of thing. Yeah, well, so they're saying, so what is the hold-up with starting the church? Okay, I started it next week on my veranda with six people. So I did that for probably four years or so at Glastonbury, and um, I never smoked spoke very much because never smoke either. <laughs> I didn't, maybe I smoke too much um, because I was never really sure of the information that I was giving so I let the guests talk most of the time and that created a frustration in me because I thought there is a reason why I had to start this church because I didn't want to um, it was a growing experience for me every time because I felt that I wasn't worthy of it um, but I, I knew that it just had to be so it was like I was doing as I was told and we just went on so it was always never about religion um, and all those sorts of things. And I had to find a lot of fears. And I, you know, I have to be honest to say to people, well, it's taken me a long time to even say the word God because of, you know, just culture and stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that so, was the way So Denise's happened. background is that she began this church, this spiritualist church then in Glastonbury, which is near Gympie, which uh, she eventually left and Millie took over. And that's how I met Millie. And that's how I finished up meeting Denise, <laughs> through her own church, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I'm up in North Queensland now, but I'm making the journey down to do this mediumship because I want to know what the truth is, because I stopped channeling and everything. So I, I just want to see whether it's me. All right, so let's uh, read the first message. You're right there, and I, I can hold the mic for you. If you, want, you can that way. So pre-development, and I've been a little bit like the last gen, you know, just writing down stuff that came to me. So um, I don't even know if it was God. So the ability to love those who have harmed you, to be responsible for your own soul development, to cry when you need to, what will come to you will be your greatest learning tool to grow. To have to know with your heart is your guide. Know it and love it. Its emotions will let you know when you have work to do on yourself. You will know what the errors are, then God's love can help you. Replace your fears, tears, error with truth and love. You have come so far, but in doing so have collected an enormous amount of debt to pay for your sins. This is your soul condition paid on by your love of attraction, um, your law of attraction. The errors you have learned as a child and now live through, these experiences you now face are your law of attraction based on your errors on your soul. All right, now I'm going to make some comments about that. That's good. Firstly, the, your background of coming from some, uh, your, your feelings towards God are that God's a punishing God. And, and that's been coming out a lot in your own feelings, you know, historically. And that has also come a lot through that particular channeling that you received. Yeah. So, so while um, there were some truths in that channeling, a lot of it was based around the fact that you feel that you're a sinner and that you have, no, to, you pay have, for, no yeah. and that you have to pay yeah. for things. Yeah. And the truth is that the law of attraction is a little different than that. What the law of attraction is doing is operating upon your current soul condition mm -hmm. and not so much upon what has happened in the past. But you have a deep fear that you've done bad things in the past, even though you haven't done very many bad things. But you have a deep fear that you have. Yeah. And that there's, a, and there's a, what you then classify as sins that need to be sort of compensated for. So what you finished up uh, channeling was more about the law of compensation Okay. than the law of attraction. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So that was in the first instance. Yep. So what kind of exercise do you do during a month? Do you pray? Um, yeah, praying, uh, reading every night, true gospels, watching the movies, um, racing Millie to see who get the blow up punching bag first. And <laughs> Are you staying there yet? <laughs> no, 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 we're just visiting. Oh, okay. um, lots of anger stuff, lots of male anger, lots of um, um, sexual guilt stuff, looking into all those emotions. Yeah. Um, just virtually continually during the, my day giving thanks for the truth coming in and uh, an opportunity to learn and grow. Okay. So, yeah, Self-punishment. Self-punishment. Yeah, which is yeah, obviously the things you channel at the first yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Okay. It's like I'm not worth it, so I'll punish myself with food or, or whatever. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what was the post-development like? Okay. Possibly still the same. Law of attraction is opportunities for you to grow in God's truth by observing and feeling and expressing your emotions in all situations that arise in your life. 
These are a reflection of your soul's condition, the errors of denying or breaking the universal God's law of love. Your soul has drawn these events to you as you believe these errors of love in your soul. You believe this is the true state of life and all you are worth due to things that you have experienced as a child that have hurt you and you took on the belief that these events were true. Therefore, you believe these falsehoods as who you really are and your soul brings these events to you in to expose the error, the falsehood of your beliefs about yourself. Now that is much more accurate. Mm. Much more accurate. That one still had a bit of a slant towards, like, you're a bad girl, and yeah. so a bit of self-punishing self slant. More ice cream. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but this time, a lot more accurate as to what the law of attraction's role is, which is actually expose the error within the soul so that we can actually deal with it emotionally. Mm. So the difference between those two channelings was quite large, actually. And the second one was far less self-punishing, mm. which was actually related to some of the emotions that you were working through through the month. Yeah. So that's really yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone want to thank Jeanette? Yeah. So you get the idea of what we need to do. You can see how emotions that we feel inside of ourselves about ourselves reflect upon the, what we're actually channeling. So there's a big, big influence on how we actually feel inside of ourselves towards any subject and what we actually finish up channeling uh, with, with others. So then the second uh, homework was to do with the soul condition exercise. The soul condition exercise was about trying to improve your soul condition by actually dealing with an emotion. So what, what we wanted there was that you, through your law of attraction, identified an emotion that made you angry. Who had no trouble with that part? Okay, so quite a few found the emotion that made them angry. Who actually finished up dealing with the emotion in full of what made them angry? You did? Not about sure whether it's Not sure about in full? In full, but definitely. But you definitely felt like you'd processed it. Did you channel before and after about Mary? Yes, but I have an issue with it. You have an issue with it? Yes. What's your issue with it? Um, it's too out there to even... Too out there. Oh, yeah, I like it out there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the challenge? I don't write things down. Oh, okay. That's all right. You remember them? Yes. Okay. It's very brief. Now, can you tell me, though, the emotion that you dealt with? That you got anger triggered and then you dealt with the emotion. Actually, can I, you remember what that was? I didn't... Oh, sorry. Yes. I have not spoken about that. Um, it was a bit unfortunate. I couldn't start that right away because having the mediumship number one on the Friday and then having two days of anger. And the anger stuff triggered you. And or? from Monday, I did only anger for two weeks. Yeah, no worries. And I got really, really sick. I got the flu and I was doing anger in between and flu and anger. And only in the third week did I really begin the homework. And I didn't do yeah. the the law of attraction, I went straight to Mary. No worries. And Can I just uh, stop you yes, for a second? Please. How many of you, the anger session that we did, felt really triggered after that? Like, <laughs> like had a really bad time for a week or so? Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. So that's uh, fairly common, actually, after that discussion. Oh, really? yeah. So I thought I couldn't maybe do that mediumship thing at all, but that's after, after two weeks... Oh, oh yeah, I can see that. Anyway, so I went right into... Um, feeling about Mary and nothing much happened because I don't think I released all of the anger. Yeah. Actually, I know I didn't. But on a normal afternoon, the first time after the flu, we drove to Gympie on our way home in the car. All of a sudden, something happened. And this is like, you know, Steve Irwin sometimes pops in with absolutely no reason for me. Yeah. Um, and I was told that Mary is going to have a heart attack. And I thought, this is what I'm talking about out there. Um, I don't really know what that has to do with, but it was really strong and it kept repeating, Mary is having, a, I think it was heart attack, it was, or heart problems, mm -hmm. or heart something with her heart. And to my knowledge, Mary is really healthy. Mm -hmm. She always looks healthy to me and you know, people who are in front of a heart attack don't look like Mary. <laughs> so I kind of didn't know what to do with that information, but it kept coming back several times that night and the next day. And I didn't really know what to do with it. So 
my anger came back. That was about me being pissed off with myself, not getting it right again. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and having heart attack things about Mary, which can't possibly be true, so I'm getting it wrong again. And just the week before this, I had a lot of stuff happening about um, myself. I have, I'm still in that emotion, and I'm just giving a bit of a break by coming here, but I'm, I'm in a very, very getting deeper emotion of being broken, yeah. like I am being broken. Yeah. I have been broken all my life. I was broken when I was really, before I could think, mm -hmm. and I will never be fixed, yeah. never ever. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, and after I cried for three days just being broken, mm -hmm. Out of the blue, I felt like Mary was broken as well. Mm. And I have no idea how to put that together. Mm -hmm. So first she had a heart attack and then she was broken. And I, initially it was only me broken, but I don't understand how that goes together. Okay. Well, That's the best I can explain. We might be able to enlighten you. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone else? Uh, thank you, Helga, for... And does anyone else want to share any channelings they did about Mary before I have Mary up here? Brian? And who else had their hand up? So I gather, Brian, you didn't get to do all the exercises. Um, no, I didn't do all the exercises. We um, quite a lot came up for the weeks afterwards. Yeah. And um, in the anger after the anger session again. The anger se 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 session. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and then other things happened, particularly with Raya, one of her dear friends uh, passed, passed over in America. Yeah. And it, it, it was really, really traumatic. Yeah. For her. Yeah. So it actually was a great gift, we both realised, but it brought up a lot and it was a lot of turmoil. Yeah. So um, <laughs> after about two weeks, I did the um, Law of Attraction uh, exercise first. And then it was another week. I, I tried several times and I got nothing about Mary. Yeah. But, but then something came through. Yeah. I threw away two bits of paper. And um, this is quite brief, yeah. but, but as I was writing this, just the actual experience was um, that I tried to get as calm as I could. I've, I've done some of this before. Yeah. Um, and then just wait until my mind was out of the way. Wait for the words, and if my mind came in, um, just to stop again until I felt it was coming from somewhere other than my mind. Yeah. Now, towards the end of this, I was given an experience which I've related to a previous experience, and it's actually for everybody, so I would, I would like to share that. Yeah, sure. So, again, I, I don't know where this came from, Rojo. <laughs> Not my normal one. Um, where's Mary? Okay. She is in a stage of rapid development. All of this is comparatively new to her and she's dealing with some major issues. One of these is doubt about herself and her identity, and that is understandable. Her heart is very pure, and her attitude will lead her quickly forward. She is, as are you all, getting clear glimpses of the divine truth about herself. As she is able to accept these truths into her being, it will become easier to release that which is covering over other aspects of her true nature. And I was told to put this next sentence in brackets. We are giving you more than words here. The understanding is being offered with them. That's close bracket. I wish to convey to her and to all of you who have dedicated themselves to this process, the constant flow of love from myriad beings who are supporting the beautiful flowering of the divinity within you. So how do you feel about that? Well, perhaps if I just share the actual experience when that part that was coming in, in brackets. Um, as it initially came through, I was, I was just experiencing being still 
uh, waiting for the words, then writing them down. Uh, at one stage, I, I seemed to drop into a deeper level. I, I was praying for, for help to, to make sure that my mind was out of the way. And this last bit, uh, we are giving you more than words here. The understanding is being offered with them. Um, it was a visual understanding. And what I saw was, um, it was like a, a tiered effect. There was a, there was a level and then it came down to another level, and then another level. And I wasn't discerning beings in those levels, but it was all being generated by a lot of beings who were at different levels of development. And it was like a, a big um, funnel, and all of it was being poured down from all of those levels towards Mary, and to everybody that is having this experience. Now, to complete this, um, I had um, a retreat experience through our friend Anna, and I think I emailed you who this. Um, there was one stage where I felt that in spirit form I had let down Mother God, Mother Father God. And I was shown very quickly that um, that hadn't happened, that I was having an experience that I never needed to happen. And the visual that came with that was that there was a, a level and then um, again a flow down with me down here and it was like a narrower funnel down to me. And what was flowing was um, unconditional love, completely non-judgmental, completely non-judgmental. And in looking back over the experience I had while I was channeling that, um, the upper levels were the same. Yeah. The, the upper level there was the divinity as I was able to sense it. And down through the, the different levels. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> we'll go through the different ones here because what, I, what I'm going to do after this is actually ask Mary to come up and tell you a little bit what happened to her for the last month. And that, what that will do is not only help you work out how accurate you were, but it will also help you give you a, a, a picture of where you need to go with your mediumship to get to real accuracy as well. So it would be very handy. So. See, uh, both of these bits were written up. After you were down at our place, and I, I ran into that major emotional issue. Ah, yes. And I took an extra week off work, you know, and went up to Brian's place and worked through some stuff. And I, I, whenever you talked about terror, I used to sit there and think, well, that's not an issue I have yeah. to deal with because there's none of that in there's me. There's no terror in me. No. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> I, I just went into a a deep early childhood place where I was just totally, totally, totally terrified and afraid for my life. And it was just uh, something that I never conceivably dreamed was within me. And uh, that I, and it was related to my mother, and I've spent the rest of my life feeling I had to please people on pain of death, please women on pain of death. Not, not that I would be disapproved of, but that I would die. They, they would kill me if I didn't please them. Mm. Um, that's a huge emotion for you in your life, isn't it? Yeah, a huge emotion. Yeah. How was it changing? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I think so, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. so, so these channelings were done after that event? They, they were both done after and probably they're, and they're both quite similar, so I just read the second one. Yeah, the short one. Yeah. Um, Francis is saying, um, we're right about Mary and her soul condition. Mary is working intensively on improving her soul condition and is encountering many barriers that cause her great frustration. Despite this, her dedication is helping her make the change she desires. At this stage of her progress, she feels a lot of confusion as many memories seem to have no foundation other than the deep feelings associated with them. She often feels as if she is in a morass which seems to cling and prevent her from moving. She is spurred on by her strong desire to achieve atonement. Her desire is a help and hindrance all at the one time, as she often feels deep disappointment that her change seems, change seems minimal compared with the effort expended to achieve it. 
This causes her to doubt the sincerity of her desire. At times she feels that the demands are too much for her, but these feelings are lessening. She is in probably the most difficult phase of the changes she needs to make, as these are the ones that lay the foundation for all that follows. This often seems full of frustration and disappointment, as it seems to be more destruction than construction. She is further hampered by her difficulty in conceiving where she is heading and recovering memories of this. This is not due to a lack of ability, but simply to a lack of clarity. The frustration in this is that the lack of clarity only lets her see a distorted and unclear picture about which she feels uncertain. This lack of clarity also causes her to have an unclear feeling of progress when she has made it, and the feelings only become clear when some further integration has occurred, and this is often removed by some time from the time of the occurrence of the change. None of the above hindrances are more than hindrances. Her faith has increased considerably and continues to build. Without the faith she has, she could not have progressed as far as she has so far. The powerful interplay between her feelings and those of Jesus cause her to move into guilt and frustration often. This is unavoidable and will lessen. Their feelings are assisting each other even at the times of frustration. Okay, so that was a fairly specific uh, message. Yep. And uh, as you know, we'll, we'll talk about with Mary a bit later, you'll probably feel a fair bit of it is probably fairly accurate. So, yeah, so that's... I'd like to share that uh, the other night, Francis was saying, and, and I, actually I channeled something on Paula's birthday, which was recently Paul, a message from Paula, and Francis was saying that he just wanted to remind me and all of us that uh, and his words were something like that all of us are here are not here are not here by dint of any special properties or special abilities. We were all you and worse than you, and we're here simply as a result of our desire and our commitment to do the work that you're doing. So he was talking about himself as guys, yes, the guys right, with the us. The guys, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And very, that's very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many of them have had very hard lives and also very destructive lives that's when right, they're on yes. earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Thank you very much, James. <laughs> Karen? First one and then the second one. You want to do that or just remove? Yep. Yeah. You write to hold that right up. You need to write up close like that. Mm -hmm. So there's one about Mary selfishness. Yeah. Um, Mary's soul condition can be seen in her eyes, as I think everyone's can, and the way she carries her. You need a bit, bit okay. closer, if I hold it closer, and I'll just have to mark it. Mary's soul condition can be seen in her eyes, as I think everyone's can, and the way she carries her body. As far as the latter goes, I feel this has changed since it was first pointed out to me in July or August who she was, then wearing clothes as if to conceal herself from others, now with no attempt at that, but an unselfconscious statement that she is comfortable in what she wears and that she looks well in it. Perhaps her eyes then were more covered over, as it were. She seemed unready to look directly at strangers, more self-conscious perhaps. But now she has no difficulty holding one's days, though I don't know how she goes with total strangers. So from that I sense, through my spirit guide, I hope that her soul condition is of an above average degree of self-love and therefore of ability to love others. Um, that was the pre one. Yeah, can I can I comment about that one? Mary will probably probably want to make a comment about it at some time, maybe. But uh, I feel it's mostly your own your own feelings. That was the pre one. Yeah, that's the pre one. And and it's uh, many of. Many of you ladies have a certain judgment of Mary that you're very, very tempted to hold on to under certain circumstances and situations. And, and, and you'll find when we talk to Mary what she's really feeling, and you will see the big difference between what you believe she should be feeling and what she's feeling, 
And that hopefully will give you an idea of how ma many emotions are inside of yourself that you need to deal with about being a woman, for example. There, there'll be quite a lot of those kind of emotions that come out of this. So. Fire away with a second one. I felt very conscious of that, but I wanted to write that because I thought this one was very different. Yeah, yeah, fire away. This one was just a picture, so it was very easy. I just wrote what I saw in the picture. Um, Mary is walking with some difficulty along a rocky pathway, which is sloping to the left, i.e. the right side is higher, so she has to work a bit, tipping herself to the right to stop falling over. So maybe her natural leanings are towards feminine and she's needing some con conscious effort to be fair to the male half of the world. And her feet are not enjoying the boulders, they're sore and it's a struggle to keep going. But she won't stop or sit down, only slows down. She's pretty slow just now, but it's Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a desert landscape, dust and rocks and no shelter or fruit trees. Blue sky, but it would be nice to be out of the sun a bit. The sun is like a pressure on her, sometimes welcome, but sometimes it would be nice if it could go behind a cloud. So what did you interpret that to mean? Um, uh, it felt to me she was having a hard time at the moment. Yep. And that the leaning towards the right, the left meaning that she's having trouble with the male side of... Yes. ...because of the right side of things? Yes. Yep. So that's what you interpreted that to mean? Well, I was just saying what the picture said. Yeah, no, 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 that's what I'm saying, but I'm, yes. I'm now asking you to sort of interpret what you felt that meant. Yeah, I felt Based that. on your feelings, yeah. not, not anyone else, it's yours. Yeah, I felt that the left and the right bit had all to do with the feminine leanings and the masculine, leaning away from the masculine. Okay, okay. It's good, and you felt the path was pretty rocky, but she just keep pushing herself. Yeah, and her feet were sore. And her feet were sore. <laughs> In other words, she was finding the process difficult at times. Didn't want to go. Didn't want to go sometimes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we'll soon see whether these things are true. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Good. Thanks. Good. <laughs> if we could have Jen and then Mary Ellen and then Jen and then Liz and then that we'll have to probably do. In fact, we may not get to all of you because I want to get Mary up to help clarify some of these things. So Jen. particularly difficult time after the anger weekend so it took me quite some time to get confidence feeling that that the fear and anger that I had triggered from the anger weekend um, made it irresponsible of me to want to um, get messages from the other side yep. especially messages about Mary when you're in a state of anger yourself yeah. yep. so I felt a sense um, a burden um, of responsibility that um, because I was profoundly angry that um, um, and you were pretty angry with the soulmate during that time too weren't you? with her soulmate <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> okay, which would have so, influenced the message too obviously so I made a conscious effort to tune out rather than tune in. Yep. Um, and it wasn't until a conversation between Peter and Graham, which happened at the end of last week, that I actually started to feel my connection return. Yep. And the connection grew strong, and <coughs> my intuition then began to um, guide me um, deeply is the best word um, that led up to our community discussion mm -hmm. where um, Graham and I were led to your door um, face to face with Mary mm -hmm. and face to face with you mm -hmm. which was my heart's desire that whatever I had to say to Mary that I could say to her face to face rather than in a public setting. Mm -hmm. 
And so then the channeling occurred in front of you, um, following my pure desire to um, share with Mary personally. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't have anything written down. I just had, I've rewritten the thoughts and feelings and words that I remember I channeled at that particular time mm -hmm. because, and wanted to share it with everyone because I thought it was just so profound mm -hmm. and feel now um, strengthened within myself um, from it. Okay, so, so let's go ahead. Um, Mary is thought of by the universe as being such a beautiful embodiment of femininity and love and that she is being empowered and supported through her present endeavours. She is a perfect expression of divinity, loveliness and womanhood. That if she stood in the room and did nothing, she would still embody this loveliness. Um, though she feels she is struggling, she is, do she is doing all that, she that is needed. So can you remember anything else that I said at that particular moment? Um, you also talked about the power of uh, Mary's soul in terms of um, changes that would occur on earth for women. Mm. you remember that? So let me see if I can tune into that right now. Um, it's a feeling that Mary has um, all of the universe supporting her in, in terms of um, demonstrating to everyone um, just what womanhood and femininity is all about. Mm. Mm. Alright, so let's see how that goes this week. Thank you. spoke to you, you identified an um, in, inability to be heard as a problem, mm -hmm. and it didn't, it was a deep issue. You have to speak loudly. It was a deep issue, but I realised afterwards that it's more that, not that people cut me off when I talk, but that when I'm talking without me, um, people will not even notice that I'm talking, it's not that they want to shut me down, it's just they don't even notice I'm talking. Which is an interesting law of attraction right now. Because mm. the first part of what you said, nobody heard. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, keep that up, guys. Um, yes, yeah, so I found during, since the last, since the anger session, that um, I've chucked a few wobblies at people, mm -hmm. particularly when they cut me off, which I, in the past, would have just let them do and not worry about it, but um, so I interpret that as me being more aware of, I guess, my own rights or my own yeah. self. But you need to actually go a bit deeper than that into that sadness that you feel. Yeah. Well, I, but you at will. the moment, I'm not. You will. You will. <laughs> Although I, I feel that I've been doing a few things, yeah. touching on it more than actually going deeply. But so did you do the channeling before that and that? Yes, yeah. right after the session. So okay. Sweetness, brown ooze bubbling large bubbles, black viscous stream of misery, relief of lying peacefully in sunny green field near scattered trees on cool summer day listening to stream, black stones glued together in stomach, peace, relief, feeling safe but torn between joy and lightness and sadness and despair, ocean roiling on surface but calm, though powerful currents and direction in its depths. Although destruction occurs as a natural cause, nurturing everything in it. So what did you interpret that to mean? That there's a lot of brilliant stuff happening, but still the underlying things keep coming up and bothering her, I guess. Yep. And a lot of sadness and despair. As well as a lot of joy. Joy and, yeah. and, and lightness as well. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, so that's what you channeled, and it was sort of like a picture, obviously, that you were feeling. Feelings, more, more like, feelings. yeah, glup, 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 sort of. Okay, no worries. Let's say over the second one and see how that goes. Well, the computer, the printer stopped working. Yeah, probably. no worries. Flowing, guiding, developing, loving spirals above a brown mass. Sweet foam floating on honey, graduating down to dark treacle in the depths. Encouragement whilst knowing the worst. Dark green velvety bubbles breaking the surface of the brown ooze. Mm. Then I kept getting stuff about me and stopped trying to block it. Yeah. And it got the community functioning divinely, need others to give me, which is coincidentally my initials, Mary Ellen, yeah. permission, say I'm good enough to be allowed to do something. And then back to Mary, warm, honey, smooth healing. Yeah. So you seem to be getting things a lot as pictures or, or words that are sort of descriptive words. Try. Um, I use descriptive words to try to get the feelings. Yeah. So for you, obviously, a lot of words portray feelings with it may not be the same for others. Mm -hmm. So what were your feelings about how Mary was feeling with those words you were mentioning? I got the feeling that she's on a path that she needs to be on and that while there are challenges for her, that She's happy to be on the path, yeah. and um, I guess and dealing with the challenges as they occur. Yep. Yeah. Good. No worries. Well, thank you for that, Mary. The reason why I'm not correcting any of these or changing it is because I'd like Mary to come up and explain her emotions to you. And after she does that, it will be quite obvious how accurate you were. Does that make sense? Yeah. You want to hold it? Yeah. Okay. Um, after the anger um, weekend, I had a major meltdown because I'd been waiting for a property to come on the rental market out at Chevalum. I fell absolutely in love with it and I went and sat on the veranda and I did all sorts of things trying to make it mine. And I looked on the computer several times, it wasn't there yet, and then I looked on one Saturday morning. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is not about the situation. It is, it is. It is. No, it isn't. It's about the anger. No, it's not. It's about you wanting to explain the process. Oh, okay. And why do you so, want to explain your process? Because the where it brought me because of where it brought me with the anger. But why do you want everyone to explain how you got there? There's a motion driving you, wanting everyone else to understand how you got there. So my suggestion is you have a look at that emotion when you sit down. Oh, Does okay. that make sense? Yes, yes. Yeah. Is that alright? Yep, yeah, yeah. okay. So it's clear enough to just give a summary. The summary okay. is you had some angry mm -hmm. place things come up. Yeah, very, and very, very angry stuff come up. Um, and did you feel them? I did, because I actually rang work and said I'm not coming to work because I'm crying too much. And um, did you feel that you got to the cause of all of them? I do. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Now we won't yeah. say what they are. Okay. But Fair enough. The main thing is that we we. Can, yeah, we can... I'm sorry. I'm a bit of a storyteller. Yeah. And we want to stop. <laughs> okay. That. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. By the way, I, I just want to address storytelling with all of you. There is a deep emotional need inside of you to storytell, and you really need to. If you feel if you've done storytelling most of your life. And you need to allow yourself to start looking at why you need other people to understand what you're going through. Because there's a deep feeling underneath that that is really going to be powerful for you if you connect to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, this is what I wrote about, well, this is what came to me. I asked. This is the for, first time? Yes, the first time. Just asked the Spirit Guide to tell me about Mary. Yeah. She is very bright, her light is shining very much. It has many brilliant colours, reds, yellows, blues, greens, etc. She is soft and clear, a kaleidoscope of beaming lights and stars. She is well known 
here, we like to listen to her. Her love for God is great. She is very loving to her fellow man and woman and thinks of them often. Her heart is getting clearer all the time. Her soul is singing at this time and her love for God is great. Okay. And then after you <coughs> did some of that anger work and worked through some of those issues, mm -hmm. what did you come up with then? Well, I actually wrote one piece and then three nights ago, I was actually on my way to the toilet before I went to bed and... Sorry. I know. I know. <laughs> I definitely don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm just, uh, just yeah. helping you identify yeah. when you're telling okay. the story. Um, this voice in my head said, ask me again about Mary. Good day. So I went back to bed and this ask is what I wrote. Mary. Okay, good. This is about her soul condition. It has changed considerably since we last wrote. She is very advanced in many of her emotions now. Mary has dealt with some major core issues since you last saw her, and I'm sure you will see a huge difference in her yourself. She is more confident and assured now and is feeling more comfortable with the role she is about to play for you. She has great reservations. She had great reservations before, but is now quite at home in her mind and heart. She is truly a blessing to you all and will be a great asset to Jesus and his work. She trusts the process more now. You, yeah, that's it. Now, you, you obviously made some very big changes in those two, between those two conditions. And it's very, very, uh, pre no, the, the, the clarity of that second message compared to the first is so much difference in clarity. That, uh, that you should be really proud of the work you did in between, actually, Jen. So um, the, key, the key to you is just to keep allowing that work to continue and, and to look really deeply at the reason why you need to tell the story because there will be a lot of emotion in there for you. It's acceptance. Yeah. So, that's it. Thank Good you. on you. Thank you. condition is very fragile right now as she is going through transition very rapidly. This is causing great stress and having everything revealed to her as her soul condition can't my right hand, reflected, reflected yeah. in her law of attraction that others would feel a tremendous burden. As I said, her being fragile right now means many areas of her life or soul are exposed and feelings of unworthiness are definitely noted. Her beautiful love for God and for her soulmate are a joy to see as she blossoms and grows in love. This soulmate love has strengthened her and pushed her to a new dimension of trust and humility. Her soul is softening and expanding rapidly and is a joy to see such a beautiful soul grow in love. All right, so, all right. I think I'll leave some things for Mary to say about that one as well. There are certain parts of accuracy in that and certain parts that are just almost totally your own emotion. Okay. All right? That was my first one. Yeah, and that was your first one. And you'll see perhaps what bits are your own emotion and what bits are, are the accuracy that you were getting from when we talk with Mary. So let's have a look at a second. Um. There are many, many beautiful beings that surround Mary and that are watching and guiding her and loving her. They protect her from rogue spirits in the spirit world that thwart her life in an unnatural way. This protection is paramount at this time of transition, plus their love and guidance when needed is there for Mary to know that she is not alone and there is and if there 
sorry, and help is there if it is needed. This exists because of her great love for God and her desire for love and truth in her life. There are also lost spirits in the first sphere that do not want to see this progress Mary is making as they feel threatened and wish her, to cause her trouble. Um, they keep at a distance. Um, sorry. They are kept at a distance. My glasses, sorry. Um, by loving spirits, but they but are there because of fears and she, that she could be harmed because she is connected to Jesus. Plus, Mary is also feelings of unworthiness to be Mary, the partner of Jesus. Okay, so that was the second one. So, what emotions did you work through in between? Um, I worked through a couple actually. Um, one was to do with, to do with men, yeah. um, and the reasons why I feel controlled by men, and that was really quite deep. Yeah. Um, and the other one was to do with God and um, ha having feel felt abandoned yep. when I incarnated into this life. Yeah. Can you see the reflection of that one in particular in the second message? Can you mm. see how a lot of the things you were talking about were protection and mm. from, from God and from spirits and so forth? Yeah. Mm. So it's interesting to see the interplay of a lot of these emotions that you feel in influencing the messages that you're receiving and the flavour of the message. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. But we'll talk more when we talk to Mary, so you get yeah. Thank you very much. And um, we have time for one more? Yeah, come on. Come on. <laughs> No, it's interesting because um, it's been a pretty intense couple of weeks and for me a huge issue that came up was not being believed um, yeah. or trusted. And I feel today I almost come this close to hearing it because this is the biggest conference I'm to sit up here and trust myself that this came true and yeah. I suppose probably me needed validation that it is true. <laughs> Um, well, you get that either way. Right? I know. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but it was also because uh, some of it, I won't do it all because some of it's very heady and I know it's my stuff, but I, I just Well, actually, very... actually, I'd like you to do it all. Okay. Is that all right? How, sure. like, how oh, long yeah, is sure. it in this case? I, I, I can speak quickly. <laughs> no, no, worries. let's see how it But goes. it was just because the part that came through that it was emotional. Yeah, I think you'll feel it differently. <laughs> the soul of the one you know, uh, you now know is Mary is one of the fairest souls that the universe has ever known. She has moved with grace through the different spirit, uh, spheres of existence with such love and kindness for others that it comes as no surprise to you that she undertook work in the field of helping assisting others in her work prior to, uh, prior to meeting AJ. She has suffered much grief in her previous